In this video, we'll shift our focus from ionic compounds to covalent compounds. We will learn how to name and write formulas for binary covalent compounds. Recall that a covalent compound forms when nonmetals share their valence electrons in order to achieve a noble gas configuration. An inorganic compound is a compound that does not contain carbon. Don't get confused though because there are a few inorganic compounds that do contain carbon, like carbon tetrachloride, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide, to name a few. So how do you take the formula of a binary covalent compound and turn it into the name? You probably could have guessed this, but first write out the name of the first element in the compound, then write out the second. Change the ending of the second nonmetal to ide. For co covalent compounds, you have to use Greek prefixes in order to indicate the number of each nonmetal in the formula. Keep in mind, though, that if there's only one atom of the first element, don't include a prefix. Also, if adding the prefix creates an OO or AO vowel combination, drop the first letter in the combination. Here are the Greek prefixes used to indicate the number of atoms in a covalent compound. One is mono, as in a monologue where one person talks. The prefix di is used for two atoms. A triangle has three sides, so the tri prefix means three. Four is tetra, which is where the game Tetris gets its name, for the bonus achieved when you clear four lines at once. Five is penta, and six is hexa, as in a pentagon or a hexagon. The prefix hepta may not be as familiar to, to you, but it means seven. Use octa for eight, like the number of legs for an octopus. Nine's prefix is nana. A decade is ten years, so use deca for ten. There are prefixes for quantities larger than ten, but we won't worry about those at this point in your chemical career. Here's some practice using the rules for naming binary covalent compounds. NO is nitrogen monoxide, because we don't use the mono prefix for the first element, and there's only one oxygen on the second element. NO2 is nitrogen dioxide because there are two oxygens. What do you think N2O is called? It's N2O is dinitrogen monoxide. What do you think N2O5 is called? N2O5 is dinitrogen pentoxide. Remember to drop the first vowel if an AO or OO combination is created when you add a prefix to oxygen. What about H2S? Dihydrogen sulfide. SiO2? Silicon dioxide. CF4? Carbon tetrafluoride, CO, carbon monoxide. Now that you've learned how to write the names, how do you write the formulas if you have the name of a binary covalent compound? In a way, this process is much simpler than the process for ionic compounds because you can use the prefix, or lack of a prefix, in order to determine the number of each element in the compound in order to write the subscripts for the formula. For example, carbon tetrachloride. The lack of a prefix on carbon means there's only one carbon. The prefix tetra means there's four chlorines in the formula. The compound formula then would be CCl4. Let's practice several of these together. Iodine heptafluoride. Obviously we have some iodine in this compound and some fluorine. Since the iodine has no prefix, we can assume that there's just one iodine. The fluoride has the prefix hepta. Well, hepta is the prefix for seven. So the compound iodine heptafluoride has the formula IF7. What about di nitrogen? monoxide. Well, dinitrogen 
monoxide has nitrogen and oxygen. The prefix di means there's two nitrogens and the prefix mon mono from monoxide means that there's just one oxygen. This compound has a common name that's often used and the common name is nitrous oxide. Sulfur dioxide has sulfur and oxygen. Oops, sorry about the color there. I wanted to make my oxygen blue. And then the prefix di in green means that there's two oxygens. No prefix on the sulfur means there's just one. What about dinitrogen trioxide? Well, there's nitrogen and there's oxygen. The prefix di means there's two nitrogens. The prefix tri means there's three oxygens. N2O3 is the formula for dinitrogen trioxide. What about nitrogen monoxide? Well, no prefix on the nitrogen means there's just one nitrogen atom. The prefix mono means that there's one oxygen atom. This compound also has a common name, and it's called nitric oxide. The compound carbon tetraiodide has carbon and iodine. No prefix on the carbon means that there's just one, and the prefix tetra means there's four iodines. These four compounds have had names much longer than the rules for naming binary covalent compounds have been systematized. As a result, you should be able to use and recognize their common names instead of their standard names with the prefixes. This inclu they include H2O, which you know is water. NH3 is ammonia. Not to be confused with ammonium, the polyatomic cation, NH4 with a positive one charge. Ammonia is an important base in industry and in fertilizer production. N2O is nitrous oxide, a general anesthetic sometimes referred to as laughing gas. NO is nitric oxide, a pollutant found in automobile exhaust. There's an entire set of rules for naming acids, and we'll study acids in the future, but for now, just be sure to know these six acids by their name and formula. HCl, hydrochloric acid, that's stomach acid. H2CO3, carbonic acid, is found in carbonated soft drinks. H2SO4, sulfuric acid, is battery acid, and more of this acid or more of this compound is produced in industrial processes than any other chemical. H3PO4 is phosphoric acid, and you'll find that on the ingredient list in Coca-Cola and Pepsi. HNO3 is nitric acid, and that's a component of acid rain that results from car exhaust pollution. HC2H3O2 is acetic acid, and that's the acid found in just household vinegar. Bases are simple to name because most of them are just ionic compounds that have the hydroxide ion. Ammonia, NH3, was mentioned earlier, and it's also a base. Thanks for sticking through to this point. Now you know how to name and write the formula of almost any inorganic compound, covalent and ionic. Next time, we'll look at how to name the simplest organic compounds. But if you have trouble with these covalent compounds, be sure to review this video and the appropriate pages in your book and your notes. Leave a note in the comments on this YouTube video if you have questions.